This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Uh, this is the second of two lectures on Chapter 13 of the free lecture notes of Paper F2, where we're going through process costing, dealing with work in progress. Uh, and in the previous lecture, we looked at example one in the chapter to explain the idea of equipment units and how we deal with them. We're now going to make it a bit more interesting. Same basic idea, but where there was already work in progress at the start of the period. Um, and the side problem here is there are two different ways you could be asked to deal with it. Either, as you'll see on the second page, uh, something called the first in first out approach. Uh, the second one, the weighted average approach. And so, um, I will split this lecture into two, otherwise it gets too confusing. First of all, we'll look at the first in, first out approach. Uh, which is example two in the uh, lecture notes. So have a quick read with me and then as usual we'll do our costings and our valuations. During July the following costs were incurred. We spent 24,900 on materials and 20,075 on labour and overheads, and we were putting in 30,000 units. However, at the beginning of July, there are already 15,000 units of work in progress. So we'd already got 15,000 units there at the beginning of the period, and then we put in another 30,000. And the work in progress had already been valued. We'd been valued at the end of last month. Uh, materials, which are 100% complete, 9,000. Labour and overheads, which are 40% complete, 1,250. So that work in progress was already there. This month, we did some more work. We finished them. At the end of July, we had 5,000 units of work in progress. They were 100% complete for materials, 50% complete for labour and overheads. All right, well, the first thing always we need to do is sort out what's happening to the units. Uh, now, I don't mind how, well, how can I mind? I don't care how you do this. I always think the easiest is to do a very tiny little T account. And to say, ah, how many units were there in the beginning? We had opening work in progress, 15,000 units. Uh, during July, if you look at the top table, uh, we started another 30,000. And so we're working on 45,000 units. We're hoping to finish 45,000. What happened to those units? Well, either they were finished and left the process, or, of course, they're still in their progress at the end of the month, the closing work in progress. Uh, and how many were still in progress at the end of the month? Well, at the end of July, there were 5,000 units still in progress. Oh, dear. And so, given that we were working on 45,000, if 5,000 of them uh, are still in progress, the remaining 40,000 must have been finished. That's the missing figure. So that's the first thing we must sort out, see what information we're given, and sort out exactly what happened to the units. Secondly, for reasons that will become very obvious shortly, we need to work out how many units are started and finished 
this period. Now, say so you'll see why shortly, just be patient with me. But the point is this, you see. We first did first out. We assume the first thing we do is finish off those 15,000 that were there. Then we start another 30,000. But of course, not all of them are finished because some of them are still left at the end. Well, I do know how many units we started this period, 30,000, but not all of them were finished. I know how many units were finished this period, but some of them had already been started last month. Well, I want to know how many did we start and finish this month? And you can get the same figure two ways. You can either say, ah, we started 30,000, but some of them were still unfinished, the closing work in progress. 5,000 of those 30 weren't finished, which means 25,000 were. Or the alternative way, it doesn't matter, whichever is more obvious at the time, is to say, well, we know how many were finished, 40,000, but some of those have been started last month, the opening work in progress. So 15,000 have already been started and we just finished them this month. Uh, so it's only the remaining 25,000 that were done from beginning to end this month. Now we can do our costings and you'll see why I need that figure. Uh, like before, we have to deal with each cost separately because there are different stages of completion. I'll have a column for materials and a column for labour and overheads. And for first in, first out, first of all, we, we, we take the cost, we take the, the amount spent this month. How much did we spend this month? You know, the bit at the top. On materials, we spent 24,900. On labour and overheads, we spent 20,075. Uh, we want to get the cost per unit this month. Uh, and so, like uh, in the previous uh, lecture, the previous example, we say, what did we spend the money on, the equivalent units? Well, we spent money on three things. The first thing we did was finish the opening work in progress. How many were there? 15,000. So that's the first thing we're going to do, finish the opening work in progress. Then what did we do? We did some units from start to finish. And we just worked out that having finished those 15,000, we then did another 25,000 from start to finish. And then what did we do? Well, we spent a bit of money starting the closing work in progress. And the closing work in progress from the question, at the end of the month, there were 5,000. Now let's look at uh, each of the costs separately. Now for materials it's very easy because the opening work in progress, if you look at the middle table, it says at the beginning of the month they were already 100% complete. And so if they're already 100% complete, there was no extra work to do on them. As far as labour and overheads are concerned, though, the opening work in progress, they were already 40% finished. And so this month, we only needed, well, we did need to do the remaining 60% of the work. 40% already done, so 60% work this month to finish. 
and 60% of 15,000 units. Well, 60% work on 15,000 is equivalent to full work on, what does it come to? 9,000 units. Sorry, I've got to black. So be careful there. The opening work in progress is the percentage needed to finish them. That's the work we're doing this month. Uh, we then went on and did some from start to finish. Well, of course, if we do them from start to finish, those 25,000, well, it's a full 25,000 units worth of work. And uh, finally, we started the closing work in progress. There's 5,000 units, and what does it say? At the end of July, there were 5,000 units. They were 100% complete for materials. And so we've done a full 100% work on those 5,000. A full 5,000 units. Our labour and overheads, though, at the end of the month, they're 50% complete, so we've done the first 50% of work on 5,000, uh, which is 2,500 units. And so now we can add up, we've got our equivalent units, and we can get the cost per unit. For materials, 30,000 units. So the cost per unit, 24,900 over 30,000 is 83, I think. I better check. 24,900 divided by 30,000. Yeah, 83 cents. Uh, whereas for labour and overhead, the equivalent units, uh, 36,500, I think. 34, yeah. And therefore, the cost per unit for labour and overheads. Fifty-five cents. And so there's the cost for a full unit of materials and of labour and overheads. Uh, and therefore for a completed unit, the cost of a finished unit, this month, uh, add them together, 83 and 55 is... One thirty-eight. Okay, so it could just be that we were after, in, case, in which case we'd have finished. However, very likely we'd be asked to do with the valuations. Now, uh, what value do we place on the finished units? What value do we place on the work in progress? And here we have to be a bit more careful. First of all, the finished units, the output. How many were there? 30, no, we, oh, we worked out at the very beginning, <laughs> sorry. Oh, 40,000 were finished. However, we're gonna to have to be rather careful here at valuing them because some of those 40 that were finished had already been started last month, and a lot of them costs had been incurred last month, and costs could have been different. The rest of the units were done this month, and we know what this month's cost is. So we're going to have to keep the two separate. First of all, the opening work in progress, which was 15,000 of those units, I want to know what the total cost of them was by the time they got finished. Well, at the beginning of the month, we'd already spent, last month, what does the question tell us? Uh, the opening work in progress, uh, it was 9,000 on materials, 
12.50 on labour and overheads, so 10 to 50, 10 to 50. So that bit of the cost had been spent last month and it's given in the question. Uh, but we've now got to add on the cost of finishing them. And we finish them this month at this month's prices. Uh, well, materials, no problem. Remember, they were already 100% complete. So we didn't have to spend anything extra this month. Labour and overheads, though. We did have to spend something this month. Uh, there were 15,000 units. At the start of the month, they were only 40% complete. So this month, we had to do the work on the remaining 60%. And because we did 60% of the work, we'll add on 60% of this month's labour cost. And this month's labour and overheads cost is 55 a unit. And so doing 60% um, of the work this month, it'll have cost us 15,000, 60%, 55 cents, 4950. So the only work in progress 10250 had already been spent last month. It's costing us another 4950 this month. So the total cost 15200. Now, however, remember I'm trying to buy you the output. So the first 15,000 we finished will have cost that much. Uh, but the others that were done this period, that were done from start to finish. We worked out earlier, that's the remaining 25,000 units. 25 and 15, that's my 40. Well, since those 25,000 units were done in full this month, they'll be valued at this month's cost of 138. Twenty-five thousand units at one dollar thirty-eight is thirty-four five hundred. Sorry, was it one thirty-eight? Uh, 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 uh. Yes, it was. And so it's taken me a while there, but the value of the output of forty thousand units that were finished this period is forty-nine seven hundred. All right, that's valued then, but the other thing we could be asked to value is the closing work in progress. But no extra problem here. This is exactly the same approach as we took in the previous lecture on example uh, one. Uh, how many units were there? There were 5,000. As far as materials are concerned, Uh, they're 100% complete. They were done, this started rather, this period. So we'll value at 100% of the materials cost this period, which is 83 cents. Which comes to 4150. The labour and overheads, well again 5,000. How much work was done this month though? Only 50%. So we'll value them at 50% of this month's labour cost, which was 55 cents a unit. So labour and overheads, 5,000, 50%, 55. 137, oops, 1375. So the full value of the closing work in progress five five two five, and there we are. Uh, now that's as much as uh, would be likely to ask in the exam. You know, not all of that, but one bit of it. However, since I've been doing it all the way through, I will quickly. We'll take a moment. I will quickly write up a um, 
process account. And just check you see what's happened. So in exactly the normal way, here we did have work in progress at the beginning. So we've got the opening work in progress. Fifteen thousand units, and the total value of it: nine for materials, twelve fifty for labour, so ten to fifty. We bring in what we spent this month, so materials, another thirty thousand units, twenty four nine hundred. The labour and overheads, twenty thousand and seventy five. So in total, we're working on 45,000 units and the total costs involved, 10 to 50, 24,900, 20,075, 55, 225. What happened to those units? Well, they were either finished and transferred out or they were still in working progress at the end of the month. And how many? Well, we sorted out the units before. We know the closing work in progress, there were 5,000 units. We were working on 45,000. And so we must have finished the remaining 40. And how have we valued them? Well, the closing work in progress we valued at 5525. Uh, the finished ones, 49700. And does it balance? Let's hope it balances. Uh, 49700 plus 5525. Phew. 55225. However, don't, the 23rd time, don't worry about the process account. Uh, but do worry about the actual costings. We have to sort out our units. We have to decide, because of this typo, how many units were started and finished this period. We do our costings in the normal way, but we take the, co the money we spent this month. What did we spend it on? Finishing the opening work in progress, doing some units from beginning to end, and starting the closing work in progress. That gives us this month's cost per unit, 83 cents, 55 cents. When we value, Work in progress is no problem. The closing work in progress will be valued at this month's unit costs. But the finished items we have to be so careful with. Uh, because those items that were already in work in progress at the beginning of the month, well, it's whatever we've spent already last month plus this month's cost of finishing. And it's the remainder of the items uh, that are valued at this month's cost. So it's a bit messy. Now, I did say there are two ways we could be asked to do this. This is FIFO. And I'll have one last lecture going through the other way. But let me tell you why some people, a lot, well, most people, I think, prefer the other way I'm coming to, which is, uh, actually is easier. Here, we are outputting 40,000, obviously. But we're actually outputting them at different values. You see, those that were done this month are all being valued at 138. But the other 15,000 that have been started last month, well, they're being valued at 15,200, which is only just over a, a dollar and one cent. And okay, it's because last month, you know, costs could have been a lot less. 
But it does mean, you see, at those 40,000, some are being transferred at one price and some are being transferred at another price, which can all be very confusing. And so, as you'll see in the next lecture, the other approach, weighted average, doesn't have that problem uh, and is actually, from an exam point of view, rather easier. So, think about that, go back through it if you need. Check your clear what I've done. Uh, and in the next lecture, we will in fact do the same example again. Uh, it's example three, but it's the same figures. And we'll do it the weighted average approach. And as we're doing it, I'll highlight the things to watch for, the differences between the two approaches. Anyway, that's the next lecture.